So I received a comment yesterday <laughs> when I made my last video. Uh, essentially, I have been using Photoshop for about 12 years now, since that's pretty much what I've been doing since I did my education uh, 12 years ago. I'm one of those type of people that think that if there's a software out there that specializes in one certain thing, of course, it's going to be better. But I'm also a very comfortable person. I like to stick to things that I know actually works for me. Like, for example, if I know how to use Photoshop, I'll keep using that if I can use that for the same purpose that I'm trying to do it for. So when I do, for example, something like pixel art, uh, I'll be using Photoshop every single time because I know that software. I've been using Photoshop and Illustrator for 12 years, so why not just stick to it? Um, so a person commented yesterday, Aciprite, and I thought that was a spelling mistake because I've never heard about this program before. Here, I, I watched the trailer, which is the one that you have down here that actually shows a little bit about what this can do. If Pixeloid is pretty much what you are out to do, then it seems like it has a lot of tools for it. I, I didn't think you could actually animate in here. I scrolled down and I can actually see some animation stuff happening. So you can probably do a whole lot of stuff in here and it's probably more tailored toward pixel art than Photoshop probably is because that is a, well, it's a photo editing software. It's not really supposed to be used for, for pixel art. So it's just kind of interesting to see something like this. And I thought that today, why not try and download it for the first time on video and just kind of like check it out and see what this can do in comparison to Photoshop. I'm one of those people that don't really like to step outside my comfort zone when it comes to like learning new tools, but let's go ahead and try this out and just kind of see what, what this can do. I'm a very visual person. I look at a software that actually has pixel art as part of the interface and I'm like, oh, that's that looks good. Let's try it out. Uh, so I guess we're gonna do the trial version. I don't actually, uh, warning, you cannot save files with the trial version. Can you do anything else though? Does that also mean you can't export things? Cause you know, if you build something in here and you wanna actually see it in action, you can't really do it. I guess we'll try it out. We'll see what happens once we uh, install it and actually get it working. That was a quick download. Like how, how, how big is the software? Like 6.13 megabytes? I mean, I guess it's just, uh, it's gonna download it off the internet once we start installing it. So this is just the installer. So, you know, of course it's not gonna... Really? Was that the download process? I thought it was going to like start installing things. That is the probably the, the least heavy software I've ever used. Is it because it's the trial version? It, it doesn't like take up space at all. Wait, hold on. H how much is it? 14.3 megabyte for the entire software. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so what do we have in here? We have recent files, we have recent folders. I love the cursor, by the way, it actually looks pixelated. Uh, we do also have the latest news, so there's updates coming out. How frequently are they updating this thing? Um, but let's actually go ahead and try this out. Like, we have some options here at the top. We can, you know, do things. There's sprite, there's color mode. Oh, this is cool. So you can actually tell it what, you know, well, there's only for screen modes here, which I guess makes sense since pixel art is not really supposed to be something to print out. So uh, layers, frames, like view, help. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get started with a new project. New sprite. This is so cool. Uh, but let's go ahead and pick the, the default one. So say, okay. And what do we have now? We have a preview window? For what? What are we supposed to preview? Isn't the preview here? This is what we're drawing, right? Can I zoom in? There we go. Okay. Do we actually have a grid we can turn on? Grid, grid settings, snap to grid, shift S. Okay, so we got grid settings. Oh, okay. So that's the, the boxes we see in the background here. Can we do one and one? Actually, we should... Yeah, we should do one and one. There we go. I can actually see the grid now. I mean, is it really necessary to see the grid when you can, you know, <laughs> probably looks a little bit distracting. Like this is how you would do it in Photoshop. You would have like the grid just take up the entire thing. I, I guess it's not really necessary. So we can just go ahead and dial it back down to 16 times 16. Let's do that. Let's just keep it like this. Let's just ignore the grid for now. We're not, we're not gonna waste time on the grid. Um, so we can do layers, that's awesome. Where do we have the layers? Do we have a layers window? Cause right now I can choose colors. I can probably save some presets up here. What does that do? That's, that's a weird thing. Okay, we got tools on the right side instead of the left. So it's like completely flipped from Photoshop. So the tools are on the opposite side and color selection is on the other side. Uh, can you move these around? 
Guess not. Guess it guess it's just kind of stuck where it is. So we can erase things. We can uh, do the drop tool. Can I actually do something where Oh, it's just like Photoshop. You can. So if I choose another color here, I can I can swap between the colors. Um, I'm noticing that like a lot of the shortcuts and things are kind of like based heavily off of Photoshop. I don't I don't know if that's on purpose, but uh, it, I think I see this is a good thing because it uh, makes it a little bit more intuitive for someone like me to to come in here and just kind of like like do stuff. I've actually seen some people who uh, can like start drawing and they increase the size of the brush, but how did I do that? Oh, wait, I just moved something. Where do I have my layers? I want to see my layers. Why do I have a preview window? What is the preview for? I can play and pause it, but nothing is happening. Opacity, shade, background, foreground. I have no idea. Uh, this is pen pressure. I, I do have a tablet up there. Do you use tablets for pixel art? It's, it's, I don't know, like I've always imagined that when you do pixel art, it's just kind of like a, a mouse thing, you know, like like I have a, I, I feel like I have a mouse that's pretty uh, controllable. I don't need to have a tablet. There we go. Is it pixel perfect? I think it's close to. Uh, let's try and make a new layer. Uh, let's just make it like that. Wait, it's just, it's just making a new window. How do I see my layers? Like I saw screenshots of this software, like I did cheat a little bit, but I just kind of like saw screenshots to see what it see like looked like. And people had layers at the bottom that they were like putting on top of each other. Like, how do you, why does it say frames? <laughs> how do I go in and actually, uh, uh, I, I just want to have layers. I don't want all of this. How do I make, <laughs> oh, there's, wait, there's a built-in tutorial. Oh, okay. It's based on YouTubers. <laughs> a crash course in 30 minutes. So it takes 30 minutes to learn this software. That's good. So you don't have to waste 10 hours like you do in Photoshop because there's so many tools you don't have to use in there. Oh, there's documentation. This is this is what we need. Like back back when I had to learn Unity, I just open up <laughs> the documentation. I just start reading the whole thing. Um, I, I didn't read the whole thing, but I, I got a pretty decent way there uh, until I started looking up tutorials instead. Uh, one sprite can be subdivided into several layers. You can see them in the timeline. Great, I don't have a timeline. Each layer has several options. How do I add a timeline? Oh, so the layers are incorporated into the animation tool. Animation, how do we get animation? Blur tool, wait, the blur tool for pixel art. Oh, that's cool, look at this. Can you do that in Photoshop? I don't know, you, it, it, I think it's gonna try and rasterize it. Like it's it's gonna try and make the edges not pixely, like, but it actually does it here. That's, that's so cool. Okay, let's do a tree really quick with that tool because that is so cool. So we take this and we make a tree trunk. Uh, we do have different versions here, so we can just go ahead and kind of like do this and we can just build up. Let's, let's do that. How do you increase your brush size? Scroll away, you hold, you hold down control and then do it. That's different, okay. Like trees is so like satisfying to make when you when you do like I usually like so, like one thing that I did mention in my last video when I did the pixel art tutorial is that usually you should look up references. Can you actually paste in an image and just kind of like see the references? Okay, so we got trees here. What is a really good tree to take a reference from? Um, I think we'll take the trunk from this one because that actually seems really neat. Okay, so here we got a tree. Uh, we're gonna build that into my drawing here. So basically. Can I, can I actually paste the tree in here? Can you paste image references in here? That would actually be kind of like a neat thing. Uh, I guess not. So we have a tree in the side there. Uh, definitely does not look like mine. So let's go ahead and just increase the brush size. Or let's paint it up. Let's go ahead and do that. So we get a little bit of a thick trunk here. So we can do this. This is kind of like leading up in another path. Yeah, this is so cool. Like, I'm not gonna make it super detailed. Like, you can just keep adding some, like some tiny sticks and stuff that leads out. Um, but essentially, what you should then be able to do is to create shadows very easily with this tool here, right? So if I go in and I create a darker shadow, like, uh, well, right now we don't actually have the uh, <laughs> all the branches and stuff with the. Let, let's do the green stuff. Let's let's actually do that. Let's see. We do we do this uh, green here, and then we start painting in 
areas. I actually don't like this tree over here for that. Let's uh, pick another tree. Let's draw it in. There we go. We got one, we got two. Now one of the tricks here is to try not to make the, the, the actual leaves like just completely hidden away so we can, uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and just do some things here. Do some, uh, do some cool stuff. I've never drawn a tree before, by the way. <laughs> so this is like, this is my first attempt ever at, at drawing a tree. Just, just for people watching this that are like, what is he doing? The tree trunk does not need to be drawn like that. Like, so we're just gonna, just gonna try and uh, do this as, as good as, I actually kind of like that little spot up there. So let's try and have the tree actually pop out. So we're gonna do that. Um, okay, so we got we got a tree. Uh, let's go ahead and start filling in the uh, the highlights because there's uh, there's highlights in the tree. So like the sun is coming from this direction, so I guess we can do like highlights in this kind of way. That's uh, so bad. <laughs> okay, let's do that again. See, this is uh, kind of becoming an issue because I I'm just kind of like enchanted by it now. I'm just sitting <laughs> here drawing a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of actually looking at all the different tools, like it would probably be much better that I just go in and and look up how to like create layers. But now I'm just drawing pixels on top of each other. Uh, probably not like the best thing to do. Timeline. Wait, hold on. We can just click tap and we have a timeline. Look at that. <laughs> okay, wait, let's move this up here. Uh. Wait, why do I have a preview? Is that for the when we're animating things? Can I? Can I? Oh, we can zoom in on the preview. That's good. Okay, so let's put that right here. Uh, let's actually go ahead and try this blur tool because I do think that we can create the blur effect. Wait, hold on. It's Control and then you scroll down. So we can kind of create like oh, it's the wrong layer. Create a little blur effect to like make the trees blur in together, like so. Like this is. This is something that is just super cool. We just like blur the tree together, create some shade. Oh, we don't want to do the edges. We just want to do the insides. Yeah, that does not work. <laughs> this is, that does not work. So how do you animate things in here? So I can create a new frame, right? So we have frame options up here. New frame is Alt N. Maybe shift click, Alt click, Control click. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so wait, okay, so I do this. And now we can start. Wait, oh, that's the wrong button. Highlights, look at that. Oh, that's cool. Just like in Photoshop, really. But is there a way to easily outline things in here? Because, like, one of the things you usually do in Pixelite is you outline things. Let's do that. Okay, so we go to Edit, FX, Outline. <gasps> you can customize it. Look at this. Uh, let's go and create a, uh, a dark outline. So let's do. Oh, that is pretty cool. I, I have to admit, that is pretty cool. Oh, you can even choose like which corner pieces you want outlined and which part you don't. So you can create like a little bit of weight on one side. So the way that I drew my tree is not how other people draw trees, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Mine is way too thick and uh, gooey. Whereas other people that draw trees, they're much more conservative about using uh, uh, leaves like this is a very illustrious tree that I made. Let's create some holes. Let's actually go ahead and do that Let's uh, if I can if if I can do that. Let's uh, yeah, so like closer to the tree trunk There's like a lot of uh, holes that People are making so you can like Go in just kind of like create some holes. Oh, there is a magic wand tool Wait, hold on. That's the wrong one delete 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 I don't know for some reason I was drawing it in uh, so what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna start drawing I'm gonna have just a little bit of uh, whoops on the right layer just a little bit of tree popping into the background there so we have you know, got some stuff here got some stuff there we go and then of course we do also need to have another layer because we need to add in some leaves uh, actually not leaves uh branches oh and they actually need to be uh wait how do i highlight they're way too bright they don't look like they are sitting inside a tree like shadowed out this doesn't look good <laughs> for some reason <laughs> Uh, okay, so there we go. We got some uh, we got some uh, tree stuff inside the tree. So okay, I select this shading, select colors and palette, and then it says click a color. It doesn't do it. 
When we select the shading ink mode and select a set of colors from the palette, including the previous selected base color, this gradient will act as a shadow and light. Oh. Wait, so I select the base color, then it creates highlights. If I go into the dark areas, it doesn't draw, but it still creates the highlight. How do I create shadows? I know I'm like kind of like messing up the layers now, but like I said, this is not something I'm planning on using for anything production. Uh, so like this, we got a tree, right? Let's uh, let's do the grass. Let's let's do another layer. <laughs> yeah, so like this, right? See, we can start drawing silhouettes. This is so cool. Like, look at this. It went from that to that with one pencil stroke. And it's just like, it's just so amazing. I really want to just like go crazy with the tree here. Like there's, you can do so many cool things. You can just like shade things in. And I hate that I picked a color that I'm not using in here, but you know, it's just kind of what it is. Uh, what I could probably do is, can I maybe create a brighter version? Like let's do a really bright one. Why not, wait, oh, shading, right. So now we can go up here. I can select these colors. Oh, look at that. This is what I wanted to do. So we can go up to the very top here and we can start shading in like super bright highlights. Oh, that's I that's so cool. I think that's really cool. That's a really cool tool. Instead of like going in, like even look look at how it's like it's creating highlights for the whole thing. So like it draws it in. Like it it creates a shade. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, so we can uh, say I want to select and select. Right, so we only affect these colors here. Yeah, we go. Oh, that's so cool. Like there's so much control here. I can determine exactly what I want to be um, uh, touching when it comes to these colors here. Okay, well, I can keep doing this. I, I should probably start like creating the actual um, uh, colors inside my palette up there before I start using them. Um, but this is kind of cool. Like I can definitely see how I can start creating um, really detailed stuff in here. Like I'm just so, like this one particular tool, I'm just so blown away. I can start creating details with the tree trunk down here and I can create highlights and it's just like, it's, I don't know, like you can just do so many cool things with this. Like I would definitely start doing pixel art just using this software instead. Cause this is just a, for pixel art specifically, this is a much more tailored software for that particular purpose. I really think the biggest sell for this software is the fact that whenever you do pixel art, every single pixel you draw in has to matter. Cause you're sitting there and you're customizing, you're putting one pixel in at a time, building shading and highlights and, and colors and, and shapes and stuff, silhouettes. And when you're sitting there doing it one pixel at a time, it can very easily get very, um, it doesn't look like what you're trying to build. But when you have a tool like this, where you can just say, you know what, I'm gonna draw a silhouette very quickly, just using, you know, something. And if I wanna create highlights and stuff, I just, whoa, I select a color variation up here. And I just, oh, now we create highlights. As uh, so I can do that and I can start highlighting things. And, and it, it, I don't know, it just makes it so much easier than, than having to sit there and, and dot it in <laughs> one at a time. Like, look at that. Look at the shading. It's just like, what did I do? Oh my God, I broke it. <laughs> Wait, what? What is going on? Did I actually break it? No. What did I do? I zoomed in somehow. What is this? <laughs> um, okay, so that happens. I don't know how the screen looks like. Um, but yeah, possibly, possibly, po positively surprised. Um, I'll definitely get my hands on this software at some point. It's not too expensive. It's like $20 or something. Uh, so it's definitely something you can, uh, you can pay for and it's not gonna like just completely ruin your budget. Is it actually showing the, the oh, it is actually showing the weird thing on my, uh, <laughs> it's on my recorder. <laughs> This is not sponsored, by the way. I'm not sitting here like um, being paid by the developers to do this video. I'm doing this of my free will. I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to see what this program was, and some person mentioned it, and apparently it's very popular on YouTube. A lot of people are doing tutorials on it, um, so I just wanted to see what it was. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this little um, casual video, um, and I'll see you guys next time.